Starting out in research in science can be kind of overwhelming, but it's important that you get off to good habits from the very start. And so here's a sort of quick start guide to getting started the right way. Some of the things that I highly recommend everybody start doing um, or learn about or become familiar with early on in their training if possible. These are gonna be some things that are going to be things on your computer, various databases, um, various alerts and things like this, as well as things for in the actual lab, like good pipetting skills, good lab notebook keeping, um, inventories, things like this. This is just a quick overview, but I have lots more content on all of these things on my blog, um, on the post pertaining to scientists and training page, as well as the practical post page, and I'll provide links to these. I also have some examples um, that for things like the inventories, as well as kind of cheat sheets for Google and Python um, in my uploads Google Drive, which I'll also link to. So let's take a quick look. So let's start with some software that you want to download, some things you'll want to set up, various things like this. First is a reference manager. So this is something like Mendeley or EndNote or Zotero, something that is basically when you read a paper, you can add it to um, add it to your list of papers and it will format citations when you go and you write a report and things like this, as well as it'll make it easier for you to find those papers in the, in the future. Speaking of finding the papers, you need to find papers in the first place. So you're going to want to familiarize yourself with PubMed, um, which is basically where all these papers and the information about them is collected, as well as you'll want to set up alerts so that you get in, you get um, like an email or something like this if a paper on the subject you're interested in is published or by an author that you're interested in is published. And so it's like impossible to keep up with all the literature, but if you keep up, you set up alerts, you can keep up with the things that are gonna be most important to you. You can set these up with like Google Scholar or with PubMed or, or through like various servers like BioArchive if you want updates uh, alerts for preprints. Speaking of PubMed, um, basically there's this thing called My NCBI, um, and it'll allow you to save your PubMed searches. So that's that database where you can go and look through all those papers. So My NCBI is gonna let you save those um, searches as well as set up alerts through PubMed. It also lets you do some other things like create a bibliography with all of the papers and presentations you've done, as well as like a Biosketch, which is kind of like a CV that you use when you apply for grants through um, through one of the government programs. But you don't have to be like a U.S. person in order to have a My NCBI account, um, and so it can be really helpful. Another way to stay up to date on various articles, so we've got those alerts, you can also use an RSS feeder. So an R a reader. So RSS feeds, basically what you can do is you can set a you can set a feed for various journals or for various search terms. And then what's going to happen is that when the paper on from is published in that journal or when a paper with the, when that topic is published, um, this RSS feed is going to, it'll go to this RSS feed. And then this RSS reader will kind of collect those all together so you can see all those things in one place. So I use Newsblur. There's some other ones as well. Um, these make it easier to kind of view together all these things that I'm interested in. Another thing when we're kind of talking about papers and this sort of thing is you want to get sign up for an org ID. Um, this is basically like a number that's associated with you so that if you have the name Jane Doe, you're not going to have people confused like, well, is that paper from this Jane Doe or that Jane Doe or this Jane Doe? And if you get married, well, now is um, Jane Doolittle the same as Jane Doe? Um, so this org ID is going to um, trouble with you no matter what if you change your name or things like this and it'll be associated with all the work that you do. So you don't need to have any papers or anything to set this up. You can go ahead and do it from the very start um, and then you'll have it when you do have things to publish. Um, so PubMed, that was one of the databases we talked about. Um, there's also some other databases. So Uniprot, this is where you go for protein information. PDB, the protein database, this is where basically you can find the structures, so like crystal structures, cryoem structures of proteins and nucleic acids and all these complexes, lots of things there. So the PDB is your friend, Uniprot's your friend, GenBank in terms of sequences for nucleic acids, um, that's where you'll find that sort of thing. These three are kind of like big ones, and they'll also link you to other smaller databases to find further information, but these are good like starting points. 
some other computer things while we're on the topic and then we'll switch to more of the lab stuff. Um, you want to, I highly recommend that you start learning some basic computer programming. Um, so some basic like command line stuff, changing, copying files, moving files, this sort of thing. Um, some of the programs that you have to use for various analysis is gonna make you do command line stuff. So you wanna be familiar with it. And it can also just come in handy. A lot of the programs that you might want to use are gonna be based in Python. Um, so I recommend that you start learning Python um, and so maybe a little bit of R, things like this. I also really recommend that you start learning a vector graphics program, um, something like Adobe Illustrator or a free alternative is Inkscape. Um, and these will allow you to make figures. I recommend that you make figures as you go um, and keep those in your notes so that you have them if you need them for presentations or that sort of thing. Speaking of your notes, you want to make sure that you're keeping really, really detailed notes. And so check out my post on note keeping for more about that. But you want to make sure that you're detailing like when you when something went weird in an experiment, you want to be writing that down as well as exactly what you did, what reagents you used, what preps those came from, like what um, when those what lot of the antibody was it? Things like this. Really important details to get in the habit of keeping. Another good thing to keep in the habit of keeping is the date in your file names. So you want to establish a consistent file naming and organization scheme. Um, include the dates. It makes it really easy to cross-reference between your notes and your data and things like this. Do not include spaces in your note in your file names or your like um, folder names. This is going to make it hard for computers to do things, and it's also going to make it hard when you try to do things in command line. So don't include those spaces. Include instead use like an underscore. You also, in addition to those notes, I recommend that you keep like inventory. So spreadsheets with all the information about your various plasmids, your um, primers, your protein preparations, and things like this. That's gonna make things really, really helpful in order when you're trying to find information, you can find it more easily. But before I leave you, there's some other things, a couple other things. One is actually, now we're actually getting at the bench, bench work. Pipetting, pipetting, pipetting is super duper important and you wanna make sure you're doing it right. So it might be kind of boring, but start out when the very beginning, you want to practice your pipetting a lot. Um, so you can go ahead and pipette drops of water onto like parafilm and weigh that. So you wanna make sure that the weight is what you would expect it to be. So your measurement's accurate um, based on like the density of water. And you want to make sure that your measurements are precise so they're close together to one another. So pipe, practice pipetting lots. Um, and then finally, ask a lot of questions. You basically, this can be from your lab mates when you're learning a technique, or it can be from Google. Get good at Googling, that's another thing. Um, and so you basically, you want to make sure that you're learning things the right way, not the wrong way, and that you don't think you're doing things the right way, but are actually doing the wrong way, but we're too embarrassed to ask. So go ahead and ask lots and lots of questions at the very beginning, super duper important. And I also recommend that every time you learn a new procedure, um, you basically learn why you're doing each step and what's going on. This is gonna help you troubleshoot. It's also gonna help you have a better appreciation of biochemistry. You also get a better appreciation by reading lots of papers. So go ahead and use those tools we talked about in the beginning to find papers and to read papers and all of this stuff. It takes a lot of practice. There's no like, this is the, the way to read a paper and make it really easy. Um, instead, it takes a lot of practice. And so you wanna go ahead and start practicing from the very beginning. So hope that helps you get started and have a really great time in the lab. And go ahead and check out those links if you want more information on any of these topics.